Christopher Simons, who is an expert on the situation in Japan and associate professor at the International Christian University in Tokyo. Uh, Mr. Simons, thank you very much again for your time. So there's been a fourth explosion at the Fukushima nuclear plant. As you know, what's the threat of radioactive contamination now with reports of radiation of 400 times the annual legal limit at the plant? Yes, good morning. Um, yes, there is a serious risk of contamination at this point, but the contamination is probably limited to the Fukushima area. In the event of an event such as this, uh, the amount of radiation released into the atmosphere from a steam explosion will be quite large, but it will be relatively contained to a geographical area around the plant. As we saw yesterday, the exclusion zone has been increased from 10 kilometers to 20 kilometers. And people inside that zone will certainly face an increased risk of radiation. The people who will have the most danger uh, will be the people who are working to stop this disaster at the moment. That is the emergency workers and military personnel around the plant. Now, they will be likely receiving quite high doses of radiation and the rest of the country and perhaps the world should sh certainly feel quite grateful to the work that they are doing to stop this meltdown. And, and also there are six reactors at Fukushima and there have been explosions so far at four. Is the situation out of control? Could blasts happen at the other two and what kind of radiation threat could we, could we be facing if so? Yes, as of this morning, the most serious threat is at Fukushima Daiichi reactor number two. And we heard quite worryingly last night that at some point yesterday, and perhaps for some amount of time, the reactor rods, that is the rods containing the nuclear fuel material, the uranium, and in the case of reactor number three, uh, MOX, which also contains plutonium, that these rods were exposed to the air for some time. The reactor number two situation is now the most serious of the four reactors that have had problems so far. Uh, the other two reactors, the two that haven't had problems so far, I can't speculate on whether there will be explosion at, at, at those reactors. As I understood it, reactor number four, where a small fire occurred yesterday, was already shut down. This indicates uh, a number of possibilities. The possibility that seems most likely is that the authorities are having to focus on the reactors whose temperatures are the highest, and that may require the divertment of coolant and cooling materials, such as generator power and pumping power, away from the other reactors. So. Yes, the situation does seem to be getting worse. The situation at reactor number two in particular is very bad. If those reactor rods were exposed to the air, that is, if the level of coolant in the reactor, which is, which is now uh, seawater, as I understand it, they're using seawater to cool this reaction. If the level of coolant in the reactor pressure vessel, the RPV, falls below a certain level, the tops of those rods will be exposed to the air. When those rods are exposed to the air, there is a superheating of the air and any water vapor around them. That causes oxidization, essentially very rapid rusting, which produces hydrogen. And that hydrogen is what, as we have seen, has caused the explosions in reactors one and three, and now most recently reactor two. So the potential of a more serious meltdown event at the moment is centered around reactor number two. This is a significant problem and we have to keep watching the situation quite closely. Yet, and what can be done? What are the authorities doing about this situation? Well, from 200 kilometers to the south in Tokyo, which is where I am, at the moment, I can say the, the authorities are doing everything they can or seem to be doing everything they can and taking all the right steps to contain this disaster. There are some concerns. The, the most immediate concern which has come to us in Tokyo over the past 12 hours uh, last night, uh, it's been quite a long night, is that 
the amount of fuel available in the north that is gasoline and diesel fuel is is not sufficient in other words the the north is simply running out of fuel and diesel fuel is one of the keys to resolving this situation there are at the moment i believe a number of fire trucks, uh, fire emergency vehicles, pumping water into these exposed or, or damaged reactor buildings. These pumping trucks have to continue working. There are also diesel generators which are pumping a mixture of seawater and boron, uh, that is uh, a bor boric acid. Uh, the boron in the boric acid is a very good neutron absorber, so it's good at slowing the reaction down. This seawater and boric acid is being pumped into these reactors and those pumps must continue working it's very difficult for uh, normal people to imagine the amount of pressure water pressure that's required in this situation uh, we think of high pressure water as coming out of a, a garden hose or a police water cannon uh, well the amount of water pressure required in this situation is extremely high because those reactor cores are so hot as the water hits them, it turns very rapidly into steam, and that steam has to be moved away from the reactor rods and more water put into its place. So a constant stream of water has to be maintained. So the main, the two things you need to keep the situation under control are a good supply of seawater, in this case, since that's what's being used, and a good supply of fuel, that is diesel, diesel fuel and other uh, oil-based fuels. Now, I heard yesterday that the pits, which the authorities had dug to bring seawater closer to the reactor, essentially a reservoir from which they could draw seawater into the pumps, was running a bit low. I hope that that water level has now been uh, replaced or, or brought back up to, to a safe level. But the fuel problem is quite serious. I think perhaps, I don't know what the Japanese authorities have requested in terms of help from the international community, but I can imagine one of the things uppermost on their list of priorities in terms of aid from other countries is simply the movement of fuel to that reactor area, whether by airlift or by pump, uh, by pumping truck. Uh, I believe the roads in the area are probably quite badly damaged, so some of the fuel may have to be brought in by helicopter, and that will of course be a slow and difficult process. As long as the emergency pumps and fire vessels in the area can keep working, the reactors can continue to be cooled. Of course, uh, another problem is a number of the fire trucks brought to the area were knocked out by one of the blasts yesterday. I believe one or two of the trucks were disabled, so that's another problem. And earlier, you also mentioned Japan's prime minister, who has addressed the nation about a possible nuclear meltdown at the power plant. What do you think the impact of his words are? Could this raise panic or panic or do some people doubt that the Japanese government is giving the whole story? Yes, this is a question. Um, the prime minister had to make a difficult personal decision when he said, there is a nuclear crisis going on and that the situation, I believe his words uh, were that the situation was quite hazardous. This was in reference to reactors number one and three, which was where the problem was centered, let's see, two days ago or three days ago, that is on Saturday and Sunday. Um, as I said, the situation at reactor number two is now the most dangerous. I don't believe the government is hiding anything. I think there is certainly a tendency in the population towards suspicion and paranoia. I think that suspicion is greater among the foreign community than among the local Japanese community. Uh, in a crisis, the Japanese people tend to be very cohesive, they tend to listen to their leaders and trust their leaders. And in this case, I believe that that trust is justified. Now, of course, what the government can't give the people is a rolling account of every fact uh, and every piece of scientific information coming out of the Fukushima area. And this is uh, a, situ a problem I'm having. I mean, I don't have all of the immediate facts. Uh, for example, this morning there were reports that around reactor number two, 
the containment vessel was damaged, and that was the word which the news agencies, such as NHK, used, the Japanese news agencies. Now, I don't know whether that means there has been damage to the reactor pressure vessel, that is the immediate vessel containing the nuclear and control rods, or cracks perhaps in the concrete containment vessel, which is outside the pressure vessel. Both of those situations would be extremely serious. So the Prime Minister has been quite honest. I mean, it's not an easy thing to do to tell the population that a serious accident or a serious incident is in progress. Uh, he has done that, and I think it's a risk, but it will communicate to the Japanese people and to foreigners living in Japan that the situation is serious, but that the authorities are attempting to be as honest as they can with us.